It's been a hot minute since I've last done a battle debate, so why not make it by pitting one of Jurassic Park's most famous dinosaurs, the Velociraptor, against its real life counterparts. Notice I said counterparts as in plural. This is because the fictional example will have to go through a gauntlet facing a number of real life dromaeosaurs. This will include Velociraptor, Deinonychus, Achillobata, and finally, Eutoraptor, plus a mystery fight at the end. The environment will be an open field, with both opponents facing each other 15 meters apart, and they are actively fighting each other. And I'll just say it now so people know, we will be taking this in a more real sense. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll waste no more time and get into this. So, how we'll set this up is by going through the Jurassic Park Raptors first, and then we'll go through the real life challenger. And if the raptor wins, then we'll go on to the next one, and then so on. So as we know, there have been a number of different raptors we've seen throughout the franchise, but I'm of the opinion that Blue is the strongest raptor, so we'll be using her. If there's a time I say JP Raptor, unless explicitly said otherwise, just assume I'm talking about Blue. Anyways, Blue is large even for a raptor. She grew around 1.7 meters from bottom to head, 4 meters from head to tail, and weighed in around 145 to 226 kilograms. I'm saying this because I did find sources saying both, so it's a bit difficult to pinpoint which exact weight is official, so I'll probably use an indiscriminate weight between the two. And just by looking at her structure, it's clear that she's large and very robust maybe shying out in first place to the big one. As for speed, we can see that Blue has been able to keep up with motorcycles as well as other in-gen vehicles. This correlates to Muldoon's statement in JP1 where he states that the Velociraptors are able to run at 97 km an hour. In Jurassic World, it is reiterated that it seems to be slightly slower, being at around 80 km an hour. We also see just how agile she is, as she was able to evade attacks from numerous hybrids including the Indominus Rex, Indoraptor, as well as the Scorpius Rex, often bull riding her opponent while delivering damage until they can shake her off. Blue was also shown great showings of durability and endurance. She was able to sustain a massive swipe from the Dominus Rex into a pillar, breaking it before recovering and continuing the fight. She also survived attacks from both the Interruptor and Scorpius Rex, both dangerous hybrids in their own right, especially considering they were medium-sized dinosaurs, meaning they had the additional advantage of having a speed and agility bonus compared to the larger theropods. But in saying that, she's not invulnerable. We've seen Fallen Kingdom that a low caliber shot to the hip meant that she required immediate medical assistance to survive. I think this in itself shows how power scaling can be a iffy as one time she takes a swipe from the Indominus Rex and the other a small bullet injury. This is why it's not the main focus. Blue also shows a high level of intelligence both emotionally and as a fighter, but that's probably due to having three films worth of screen time as well as being in TV shows and whatnot. She showed both her IQ and battle IQ through the franchise, being able of pack hunting, understanding instructions by humans, understanding to work with Rexy to take down the Indominus Rex, recognizing when to retreat during the battle with the Scorpius Rex and many 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 more. We also see raptors throughout the franchise being intelligent enough to set up tracks. In JP1, they were able to trick Muldoon, the same Muldoon known for being a highly skilled tracker, hunter, and warden who practically hunted every single big game on the planet. There was also the JP3 Raptors, some of the most intelligent in the franchise, where they again set traps for the protagonists. They were even deemed at the same intelligence level as primates. Very clever girls. Blue specifically has fought a variety of adversaries such as Echo, which she handedly defeated prior to the movie. Though I do want to note with her fight against the Indoraptor, the hybrid seemed to be more focused in getting to the humans rather than its fight with Blue. And just to throw it in there, we did see that her offspring was able to easily take down an adult wolf. That in itself should show how strong that these raptors are. So yeah, an impressive contender nonetheless. Let's see how far she goes against the Acrodromiosaurs. So we're onto the first level of the gauntlet, the first opponent being the Velociraptor. Wait, really? We're starting this low? Anyways, let us go through this unbelievably unfair matchup. Velociraptor, specifically Velociraptor mongoliensis, resided in, hold on to your butts, this might be a bit surprising, but Mongolia, during the late Cretaceous period, approximately 75 million years ago. So yeah, it certainly didn't coexist with Tyrannosaurus rex, unlike what some people may have thought. It grew around 2 meters in length and just over half a meter in height. Its weight was only 20 kilograms. So yeah, this pretty much makes it comparable to the size of a modern day turkey. The signature sickle claw grew around 2.6 inches in length, so I'd say that it's a pretty good size compared to, well, their small size. Its sickle claw was likely used for grappling, hooking, or maybe even stabbing, though what we are quite sure of as of now is that they weren't used for slicing. This applies to the rest of the list of dromaeosaurs as well. Velociraptor was a highly agile and intelligent predator, known for its speed and maneuverability. Its long slender legs and lightweight build allowed it to move swiftly, making it an efficient hunter. According to an older William Seller article which was published in 2007, suggested that our dangerous turkey could have reached around 35 kilometers an hour. With this, it would have taken down prey around its size, if not larger. 
One of its bigger prey items consisted of protoceratops, which at the higher ends could have exceeded 100 kilograms in weight. So despite being a small turkey, the Velociraptor clearly had evidence of having some fight in it. But as for the fight, let us all just be honest. We knew the accurate Velociraptor didn't stand a chance. It simply can't stand up to the size, speed, and intelligence of the Jurassic Park's Raptor. At best, maybe the Velociraptor would surprise it with its sudden speed and get a couple of bites in, but Blue would easily toss it off and then end the battle immediately. It's not even close. It clearly doesn't have the strength to pin Blue down, and since Jurassic Park Raptors clearly use their sickle claw for slicing, it would be over before it even started. This is basically putting a house cat against a leopard. Our accurate Velociraptor gets destroyed with no difficulty. Moving up the gauntlet to the next opponent, we clearly see that this one has a much better chance than the previous one, this being the true inspiration for the JP Raptor, the Deinonychus, specifically Deinonychus entriopus. This dromaeosaurid lived back in the early Cretaceous over 100 million years ago in the United States. He measured around 3.3 meters in length and stood over a meter at the head. And to be a bit more fair this round, we'll use the larger estimates proposed by Nicholas Campioni, which placed it over 100 kilograms in weight. So yeah, that's five times that of the previous opponent. It seems that their sickle claw approached five inches in size. Now for its bite force this is a bit decisive as some studies such as from Therian et al in 2005 placed it at around 1400 newtons while more recent but more contested research places its bite around 4100 to 8000 newtons which Mark Witten has highlighted. These higher estimates originate from discovered evidence of tenontosaur bones with bite marks fitting that of the Deinonychus. Its speed on the other hand is a bit less impressive as due to its leg structure it does seem that Deinonychus wasn't in fact as fast as previously thought being marginally slower than the fastest flightless birds of today. As for its prey items, the most notable would have been the previously mentioned Tenontosaurus. This herbivore on the heavier ends could have approached 4 tons in weight. Now, let's be real, a singular 100kg Deinonychus can't take down something 40 times its own size, so this plus other pieces of evidence does seem to support that they may have indeed hunted in packs. Though if it did hunt in packs, it might not be in the form that we think of. It could be more similar to Komodo dragon feeding frenzies where they all just ganged up on the singular target. They also coexisted with Acrocanthosaurus, which obviously they weren't going out of their way to fight, but they would have had their fair share of confrontation between them. Yet I do think that Deinonychus sits in a weird position, as it might be bigger and stronger than the Velociraptor, but it certainly isn't as big or as strong as some of the other bigger dromaeosaurs in the video, and hence it lacks the strength required for this fight. A fight between these two would go much better than that of the realistic Velociraptor. If we're using the higher estimates of Deinonychus's bite, one may even argue that it has a stronger bite than that of Blue. Even in terms of weight, there would only be a 50 kilogram difference when we use Blue's lighter and more accurate weight. But when we put them side by side, I think that it is more than apparent that there is a massive size difference. Also, we see that Blue has fought many hybrids without even hesitating, which just shows that she has that dog in her. She has the aggression to keep up a fight. Missing that with those speeds of 80 kilometers an hour, and I think that it would again be an easy win. The Deinonychus's experience against larger dinosaurs would help it stay in a fight a bit longer, but it would ultimately fall. At best, the Deinonychus would have to try to get lucky with a critical injury or a strong bite to the leg to cripple Blue. Otherwise, the fight would be over. Its sickle claw wouldn't be too useful here, as Blue just outclasses it in practically every category. So I would place this win in Blue's favor at a low difficulty. Blue now moves on to its next opponent. This being Achillobator Giganticus. Yeah, just by the name alone, we know that we've made a massive jump. It existed in Mongolia during the late Cretaceous period, around 90 million years ago. Achillobator has been estimated to reach 5 meters from head to tail, 1.7 meters from foot to head, and 250 kilograms in weight. It also had a relatively large and robust skull, which, yeah, makes sense since now we have a dromaeosaur that weighs more than the JP variant. Its sickle claw was large, being around 6 to 7 inches in size. These giants would have been particularly well suited for using their size and large sickle claw to immobilize their target. The relatively stout and short legged build of the Achillobator beta suggests that it was not too well adapted for high speed long range locomotion, which to be fair it does seem like this is a bit of a trend when it comes to the larger dromaeosaurs. Another thing to consider for the remaining accurate dromaeosaurs is that in addition to their size, there is strong phylogenic evidence suggesting that all dromaeosaurs had some sort of feathering, which would act as a buffer protecting them from surface level injury. You might want to argue that this could have helped out the previous fighters, but in my opinion the size difference was just way too drastic to be of any assistance. Anyways, let's get back on track. Achillobator likely lived alongside an early Tyrannosaurid, known as Electrosaurus. It was small compared to the later T-Rex, but its heavier estimates place it over 800 kilograms. Of course, without evidence, we can't pinpoint their exact relationship. But being that the Tyrannosaurid wasn't overly massive, there very well may have been an overlap in prey items leading to competition. It would have also coexisted with the four-ton Therizinosaur known as Segnosaurus. Now, that's not to say that it was hunting this giant, but still, throughout their coexistence, there would have been some sort of confrontation between the two. So, yeah, in my opinion, 
this fight is actually extremely close, with the killer beta being the larger of the two, while Blue Nur has to rely on her speed and agility. Since a killer beta is heavier, I think that you might gain the initial advantage during the fight, but Blue's experience shows that she's able to take damage and continue fighting, and I think that with her high level of durability and stamina, it would only be time until she'd get the advantage. Being that Blue is pushed around the Indoraptor and Scorpius Rex, both being larger than the killer beta, I think that she can use her speed to add some extra force behind her attacks. Additionally, her sickle claw isn't really limited to pinning down prey. Rather, as previously mentioned, the JP Raptors are more than capable of using their sickle claw for slicing. I just think the Achilla Beta doesn't have a big enough size advantage to take control of the entire fight, and hence I give the victory to Blue at a high difficulty. So now we're onto the final boss, Euteraptor Ostromacy. This may be one of, if not the largest valid species of Dromaeosaur. It would have measured between 5 to 7 meters in length and 1.7 meters in height. It shouldn't be surprising that since this is the final opponent of the Gauntlet, it was likely the heaviest, as they typically weighed around 350 kilograms. Although there have been higher estimates which place it between 500 to 700 kilograms, which is absolutely massive. You never expect a Dromaeosaur to reach these sizes. For this particular debate, I'll be using the 500 kilogram estimate. Although since Utahraptor was clearly such a large predator, it did have to mitigate its speed, as it seems that they were only able to reach around 24 to 32 kilometers an hour in short bursts. We get these estimates from their robust structure, stocky limbs, as well as their tibia to femur ratio. Now, don't get me wrong, its structure still allowed for a good range of motion, and it still was a Dromaeosaur, being agile and fast. The Utahraptor was also loaded with some of the highest quality weapons out of any Dromaeosaur. Its jaws were kitted out with serrated teeth that grew up to 2 inches long. As for its bite force, we can use the Deinonychus as a foundation, as it's reasonable to guess that since the Utahraptor was so many times larger than the Deinonychus, they would have a stronger bite force. This would place its bite at around 5,000 to 8,000 newtons, although some sources suggest a range between 2,000 to 9,000 newtons. Its claws were over 5 inches in length, with the sickle claw on its foot reaching over 7 inches long, possibly even 9. These claws were practically the size of your own hand. I think most interestingly, Gregory S. Paul suggested that Utahraptor may have primarily used its jaws for hunting, yet it was stocky enough to where its sickle claw could be effectively used without losing its balance. Utahraptor, a dominant predator of its era, shared its habitat with various species. These included different iguanodonts like Hippodraco and Craterosteres, with estimated weights ranging from 400 kilograms to 3 tons respectively. Additionally, it coexisted with Gastonia, a known sword which weighed around 2 tons according to Gregory S. Paul. While Utahraptor may not have always hunted the larger prey items like Gastonia, it still would have had experience dealing with them and hence attributing to its fighting experience. In a battle between Utahraptor and Blue, it's important to consider their respective strengths and weaknesses. In a hypothetical confrontation, the Utahraptor's size, strength, weaponry would give it a significant advantage in raw power and potential lethality. Blue would have to use her speed and agility to evade a fight over pure strength as well as use her intelligence to attack vulnerable spots such as the flanks or rear of the Utahraptor. But it is important to note that although Blue has fought quite a few theropods, many being significantly larger than herself, she does tend to lose quite handily. Against the Indominus Rex, she was only able to keep up with the help of Rexy, especially because Rexy was the main target of the fight. And let's be honest, although she also kept up with the Indoraptor and Scorpius Rex, she wasn't outright winning and or doing significant damage. And just to reinforce this even more, the Indoraptor had lost due to falling through the roof and then getting shish kebab by Triceratops' skull. And as for the Scorpius Rex, it lost because it had debris falling on top of it. Now, though the Utahraptor wasn't as big as these hybrids, it still was over three times the weight of blue. It would have also had to deal with its fair share of competition from other Utahraptors, giving it experience in taking on other raptors. Also, a big thing here, there is nothing concrete to say that Dromaeosaurs hunt in packs, especially for those as big as Utahraptor, meaning they would have to deal with these threats alone. This does give it quite the advantage, as JP Raptors do their best when hunting in packs or gaining outside assistance. Even Blue often received outside help with her battles. And look, this wouldn't be an easy fight either way. Blue is quite durable and quick, meaning that she'd be able to take quite a few attacks while delivering her own. Yet, I think it would only be a matter of time until the Utahraptor would get a significant enough bite in to take full advantage of the fight and end it. Blue's inability to do damage to larger theropods leads to a lack of confidence in myself to think they should be able to pull something like this off. So I think that ultimately, the Utahraptor would win at a mid to high difficulty. So at least one of our real world raptors were able to take the dub. But it's not over just yet, as I know I said Utahraptor was the final boss, but we're throwing in a secret box into the mix for those that have reached the end of this video. This last quote unquote Dromaeosaur is known as the Beskedi Giant from the Uzbekistan, which lived in the Cretaceous period. Now, there is a debate for its validity and where it belongs and all that lovely scientific stuff, but for the sake of this video, we're saying it was the largest Dromaeosaur. Scaling its toe bone to other Dromaeosaurs such as the Utahraptor provides a weight between 900 to 1200 kilograms 
it likely exceeded 7 meters in length and 1.8 meters in height. This is massive and there is no doubt that this would have been a top predator in its ecosystem. Its jaws would have been stronger than the Utahraptor and in all likelihood it may have acted less like a Dromaeosaur and more like a Carnosaur, Tyrannosaur or just a dominant predator. But once we get to over a ton, I think it should be no surprise who I think would win. Blue is certainly fast, agile and intelligent, but against a predator that's over 5 times as heavy, I don't like your chances. This is like putting a black bear against a polar bear, a leopard to a lion. Blue just stands no chance. And while yes, blue is from fiction and hence is stronger than your typical raptor, we're still looking at this from a realistic point. At best, she could fight like she did with the interraptor, trying to get onto its back and deliver some critical injuries. And then she's easily shaken off and overpowered. The Biscetti giant wins this at a low to mid difficulty. Ultimately, the Jurassic franchise's Velociraptors do have a high win percentage against most Dromaeosaurs, even without using significant power scaling. It seems they only stop in the gauntlet once the size difference just becomes too extreme. Also, the Raptors in the franchise are stated to be pack hunters and hence hindering this to a one-on-one -on -one does limit their fighting capability quite significantly. And just to sum up the three Dromaeosaurs that I think have the highest chance of victory against the JP Raptors, whether valid species or not, would be Achillobato, Dakota Raptor, and Utahraptor. There's not too many outside of that that could take on the JP Raptors. Also, you may have noticed that in this battle, I didn't talk about the accurate Dromaeosaur's intelligence awfully much, if at all. But there's a reason for this. It's just simply because their opponent is essentially smarter than them by tenfold, and so it's their experience which is more important, and hence I didn't think it was necessary to dive too deeply into it. But with that, Blue did perform quite well in this gauntlet, and now we've reached the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as commenting down below what you'd like to see next. I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.